every episode, we do a touch of Ireland because we want to share Ireland with everyone we know because we love Ireland so much. We're going in 2019. If you're interested, email us, Facebook message us, talk to us in person, call us on the phone, find a way to get in touch. We're going to Ireland. Because you're going to do things like what you're about to see. And Sloan and I were in Skibbereen and we did a whiskey tasting with a representative from Middleton Distillery where we're going to go on this tour. It was amazing. So, you ready? Yes. Here's your Touch of Ireland. Hey, welcome to Ireland. Sloan, here we are at the Tanyard Pub. Don't look so tense. In Skibbereen, West Cork, County Cork, Ireland. And we have a special guest for our What Do You Be Drinking here. Would you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Gerard Garland, and I'm the Irish Whiskey Ambassador for Irish Distillers, the company that makes Jemison Irish Whiskey. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So we just had an amazing uh, tasting experience here in the Tanyard, owned by Dermot. And uh, we tasted four whiskeys, but you agreed to let us taste a fifth. So here we are. What are we drinking now? Well, we're drinking a new member of the Jemison family called Jemison Castmates. And that's it there. And we're having a beer back as well with some of the beer from the brewery uh, that seasons our Irish whiskey barrels that we go on to age our Jemison Irish whiskey in. Right, it's the Franciscan Well in Cork. That's correct. Right? So, yes. So, so part of this beer, the, the barrels that are used to, to age this beer, brew this beer, are part of the uh, process for this whiskey. Yes. Um, we Basically, this whiskey was um, invented over two guys sitting at a bar having a, a beer and a whiskey, <laughs> which is the best way to invent a new whiskey. I think you'll agree. Aye. I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> the show was invented in the same style. I totally agree. Two guys sitting at a bar. That's where all the best ideas start. So, all right. So, tell us about this uh, Jameson Caskmates uh, vintage here. A couple of years ago, about four years ago, Shane Long, who's the head brewer and founder of Franciscan Well Brewery, he was having a chat to one of the guys from Middleton Distillery, and he said, I have a a imperial stout and I want to finish it in a Irish whiskey barrel and the guys in Middleton said no problem we'll send you up a couple of barrels and what we want you to do is make no reference to Middleton or Jemison anywhere on these uh, on this beer that you make so he made his beer it went and won loads of awards and then the guys in Middleton said if you want to put the word Jemison on your beer there's no problem at all we're, we're happy to let you do that that was very generous a great story yeah. All right, so so the uh, let, shall we try the uh, let's 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 have a slancha. Slancha. All right, here's Munyari, everyone. Yeah, let's do the castmates, Jameson's castmates. Mm. 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 Sloan, what do you think? What's your first impression? It's extremely smooth. Um, it might be the smoothest Jameson I've ever tasted, actually. <laughs> Which is pretty smooth, right? <laughs> Extremely smooth. I could drink this like water. Uh, that's not a problem. I don't, I, it's, there's no, there's no major bite. It's, it's just nice and smooth. It's, there's a depth to it though that the original Jameson doesn't have. So there's a darkness to it that. What's the flavor I'm after here? It's coffee, cocoa, and and definitely an echo of hops there at the, you know, when it's. Wait, you're just getting that echo of the, the right. hops. And, and that comes all from the barrel. Absolutely. What happens is we put, we put a, a stout called Shandon Stout produced by Franciscan Well into the barrel. And there's nothing more Irish than whiskey and stout. So uh, you put, put them into the barrel and we leave it there for four to six months. And it, it gives a lot of character from the stout into the whiskey barrel. And then we put Jemison original back into the barrel and then leave it in there again for uh, about six months and voila you get you get Chemis and castmates so it has that sort of buttery mouth that you yep. that you mentioned when yeah, we were doing the tasting of Jameson. Yep. 
I, can I jump in here? I just want to say this because when you mentioned butter to Jameson, and he can testify. Yeah. I have talked about this in the states over and over again. How when I drink Jameson is like butter. Like there's a certain buttery flavor to it. Um, and when you said that, I was so happy to hear that because I I thought it was insane. I was like, am I the only one recognizing <laughs> this? You're right all along. Man. Yeah, it was pretty uh, right uh, all along. Yeah. To, to be honest, guys, it's the second nicest thing I've ever had on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> true, a true statement. We should, we should, we should go around and introduce ourselves. Um, okay, uh, let's start over here. Uh, I'm Andy, formerly the Falcon Pie, which every every drunken uncle, every drunkle knows intimately well from yes. our interview from Andy. And, I, and I'm year. sober. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your new endeavor? Uh, the new endeavor is called uh, Eat at the Castle. Fair play to me. <laughs> you're going to see the footage. You're going to see the footage. So tell, well, us, tell well, us about well, the castle. The castle? Yeah. Well, it's, it's like tell big. us about your place at the castle. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> it's a castle. Well, it's a whole it's, it's 17th, right. 17th century castle. Right. It's got a little cafe in it. There's right. there's like this sexy chef who does amazing things <laughs> with food. <laughs> Super and, uh, sexy. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll, you'll be bringing the, the whiskey tour here. I hope to bring down to the castle, right? And can I just say, we, we started the Skibbereen and District Whiskey Appreciation Society five, five, six, seven weeks ago in Skibbereen. We meet once in a month, so we've met twice. And we had the red breast. I'm, I wasn't a whiskey man, I said this to Dermot before. Didn't get on with whiskey. The red best I came into here, we had that with the powers in our first, first attempt. Then we went with a paddy, and we put the paddy's whiskey, and we stood that up against, I think, the 18 Jameson. Yeah, well, well, that's a big... That's a, that's, that's a... That's not a fair fight. No, that's all I it really say. isn't. That, that's the, one of the flagships of, of, of Middleton Distillery. It, it is. When, you're, when your starting point is a grain whiskey that's 21 years of age, well, then it's not a fair fight against poor paddy. But we... Um, Paddy's owned by Sazerac now, and they're going to do a great job, great job with it in the, in the states. And it is, but it's, it might be a little bit younger than eighteen-year-old Jemison, and and not be as as complex. But it's, it's still a good whiskey, but it's not a fair fight, in my opinion. We'll pass you on the information from our meetings. We have a poet who takes the meetings, and the rules of the whiskey club are: you have to have five whiskeys yes. of each before we're allowed to critique them. So uh, it's an honest. You got to get to know it. Oh, you got to know it. So I'll email you the honest critique. But I just want to say that this, 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 this is serious. This has just thrown Redbreast out the window for me, and that was that's amazing. That really is amazing. So, so that's a pretty impressive review. I mean, can you can you talk about maybe what what Middleton was thinking about in terms of marketing or what what you know who who's their target audience for this? Well, you were talking about marketing. Uh, the guys in production in Middleton, the guys who make the whiskey, they take great pride that marketing had absolutely no hand in part in making this whiskey. So you're not thinking market sort of target audience first, you're thinking whiskey first. Well, production shouldn't have really given barrels to a, a third party, and they did. Uh, but what the result is wonderful. So most of the wonderful innovation that happens in in whiskey or the things we take for granted in whiskey happen by accident not by de design so it's a happy accident and it, i think it's a, a good thing like uh, like almost like the uh the the double uh charred barrel like yes. maybe that was an accident something they they just tried to s let's just see what this does i would say with it was exactly that's experimentation we're always experimenting in middle middleton and this we're making whiskey for 238 years in some shape and form uh, or the other and you know Jemison was founded in 1780 but cork distilleries were founded in 1779 so it's 238 years of <laughs> making whiskey uh, making whiskey and basically Jemison um, Middleton we're always trying new things to, you know because the world's changing so fast we gotta we gotta make things right. to appeal to people you know so, so that's why I asked about marketing because you know, at first, at first when I saw this bottle, I thought maybe this is just a target, a way to try to find a new, um, a new audience for whiskey. But you're saying it was the opposite, and it's sort of just taken off. We had a four-year. I hope I'm not going to get in trouble with this, but we had a four-year plan, and we hit the target in less than a year. 
it, it wow. absolutely exploded Fantastic. when it went over to the states we did very we did no advertising digitally or you know traditionally and we just put it into um into liquor stores and and it exploded. It just, uh, yeah. So can I, can I jump in? Yeah, I mean, I would just, I would just say, Sloan, that we can buy this at our local liquor yeah, store. Absolutely. And and, and to I'm me, like to that it. name, Caskmates, for some reason, it just sounds appealing. Yeah. It really absolutely. hits. All right. And so I, I love the story of the happy accident that this, the whole process yeah. that you talked yeah, about. True. And I just wanted to like tie this in that uh, when uh, Andy's mother uh, gave birth to Andy, <laughs> she said, "Well, there's a happy accident." <laughs> He's That's definitely a caskmate. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> You'll see that in the last episode. Okay, yeah. Asshole. Yeah. Let me have the microphone. Right, yeah. So well, let's let's right. introduce the rest of uh, yeah, yeah, the crew yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> <laughs> I just had to. I, you know. Okay. So we'll be editing. We'll be editing a lot of this out, but maybe we might keep that. We might keep that. <laughs> all right. So uh, next to me here, I have Dermot. Dermot, you own. Uh, Tanya, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your concept here of, of, a, of a whiskey-driven, uh, really great pub? Yeah, um, we're only newly opened since 16th of March. Um, I've done bar work for years and years. I worked in a bar in Cork for 12 years. I uh, went to Dublin for a couple of years. and I worked in a whiskey bar in Dublin called the Palace Bar on right. Fleet Street. Fantastic pub. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. If you're ever go to the Palace Pub if you're in Dublin. Twenty One Fleet Street, fantastic pub. Absolutely. But um, it's a big whiskey pub, and I just fell in love with whiskey. Um, fell in love with the history of whiskey. Uh, I wanted to build up my knowledge about whiskey, and and, and when I knew I was moving back to Skib, and when I knew when we were uh, opening our own pub, I knew I just wanted to bring in a whiskey bar to Skibreen and bring in a premium whiskey bar to Skibreen, not alone to Skibreen but to West Cork. Right. I think you know, bring something new. And I know whiskey's on the up. Um, so. I, I love that you're bringing the new to West Cork because I'm a lover of West Cork. I, if I can, I'll move here someday. Um, true story. But uh, but I love that you're bringing this in. How much research and, and uh, time did it take for you to sort of figure out how you wanted to plan this out? Oh, massive. Ma- well, I wouldn't say massive, but like... A lot of time and effort came in, put in, was put into this place because yeah. there used to be there used to be numerous pubs before before this pub was here, so we completely gutted the place. Um, we all got together. We all came up with our own ideas. But for me personally, this was my idea: you know, whisk, a whiskey bar into Skibreen. So we had to raise the roof here just for even the backdrop alone for behind right. the counter. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I suppose, and especially working in that pub in Dublin, you know, I knew this is what I wanted, you know. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm I'm proud, I suppose, when I see something like here tonight, you guys from America coming over here, yeah. Jer from uh, Irish Distillers and John, you can't see him there now on the camera. It means a lot. Something like this hasn't happened to Skibreen in a long, long time. It was a great night. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I felt like I was in a college-educated class yeah. uh, about whiskey. And the history of whiskey and how it's produced. This is Timmy McCarthy, sorry. One of my yeah, boys. and Timmy, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Tim McCarthy. I'm a building contractor based in West Cork. My accent is from Somerset, but I've been here 25 years. I just can't get rid of the accent. Uh, what I will say about Dermot, he took a big chance in a pub. He's a young entrepreneur who deserves every chance and every break. He's got a great idea. He's got a great concept. He's running with it. And if anyone's looking at this video, please come and try the tan yard and see the atmosphere. And it's just typically Irish, welcoming, and great style and great alcohol. I totally agree. And that was a great, that, thank you for the saying that. That was a great compliment. We've had nothing but a great time here. You've been a great host. You are, you are a great host. Yeah, absolutely. And tonight isn't over yet. Yeah, no, we're not done. And it's no.